Okay, here in part two of this section of chapter three, we'll talk about some of the specific structures that we find on the outside of your typical prokaryotic cell. This cartoon here shows us the shows us the um, over here on the right hand side it shows us an electron micrograph not a lot of detail that we can see over here but conveniently the uh, artist for the textbook has drawn a cartoon and labeled the various parts that we will see in your typical prokaryotic cell let's start on the outside and work our way in the first structure that we're going to talk about here is the uh, glycocalyx which means literally sugar coat it's an optional structure that's found on some prokaryotic cells but not on others. We can use the presence of that glycocalyx as a, a tool to help us to try to identify whether or not oh, a given microorganism might be what we think it is or not. The glycocalyx or sugar coat actually comes in two different forms which are uh, differentiated by how dense the structure is. A glycocalyx which is very tight and firm around the surface of the prokaryotic cell is known as a capsule. A glycocalyx, which is somewhat more loose and less tightly associated with the surface of that prokaryotic cell, is known as a slime layer. But both of them are made out of carbohydrates or sugars, which surround and help to uh, give that cell some shape. The glycocalyx in both cases, either a capsule, the very tightly associated one, or the more loosely associated slime layer, are doing a very similar role for that cell. They're, they're helping that cell to attach to surfaces. So a prokaryotic cell that lacks a glycocalyx, so it doesn't have a capsule, doesn't have a slime layer, is going to be less easily able to attach to various kinds of surfaces. When we get into chapter six, we're going to see how the presence of a capsule greatly facilitates the ability of a microorganism to attach to surfaces to help form biofilms. And when we get into the chapter on the process of disease, we'll see how the presence of glycocalyx helps a microorganism to additionally more easily cause disease in the human body. Now the flagella is a, another optional structure that we find on some prokaryotic cells but not on other ones. It's a structure that as you can see here kind of extends off the side the surface of a prokaryotic cell and in all cases the flagella's role is to help the cell to move. Now, the textbook here actually goes into a lot of detail about the various parts of the typical prokaryotic flagella. I don't want anybody in this class to focus on any of the details. We won't be tested on the individual parts of what goes to make up this structure down here. The important take home message is to know that uh, the bulk of the flagella is made up of a single protein called flagellin pretty easy to remember, and another protein which is found all the way down here which is called ATPase. Now as you might guess what an enzyme called ATPase does is it carries out this reaction. It hydrolyzes ATP to form ADP and free phosphate. The, another thing that's released during the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP is the release of energy and that release of energy gets translated into the energy of motion and this flagella begins to spin around and around around this basal body right here. The flagella begins to spin, this rotational motion enables the microorganism to then move through the environment as the flagella works like a little propeller. In these three pictures we can see that different microorganisms have very distinct and unique patterns of flagella attached to them. Uh, some microorganisms may have only a single flagella at the end, we refer to these as a polar arrangement of flagella. Some microorganisms may have multiple flagella all attached at one spot on one end of that bacterium, but other species of bacteria may have flagella which are arranged all around the periphery, all around the outside of that microorganism. In every case, the flagella begin to rotate because of the action of that ATPase, and the microorganism begins to move as it swims because of the action of the flagella. 
Certain spiral bacteria called spirochetes have a single flagella, but the flagella is not immediately obvious when we look at the microorganism under the microscope. The flagella is actually very tightly wrapped around the surface of this microorganism. It's wrapped and becomes actually part of the surface of this microorganism, but it does the same thing. ATPase causes this structure to spin, and it spins along the surface of the microorganism, and this results in a corkscrewing motion as this microorganism begins to move through its environment. Uh, the movement of a microorganism through uh, its environment uh, can be in response to a number of different uh, chemical cues, this idea of response to things out in the environment that all cellular life is able to exhibit. If we talk about an organism moving towards or away from a chemical, uh, we refer to this process as chemotaxis. Um, organisms may be attracted to certain chemicals that perhaps the organism might want to obtain more of. Uh, we refer to this process as chemoattraction. Uh, likewise, some microorganisms may be repelled away from certain chemicals and move away from them. We refer to this process as chemorepellent. Uh, organisms can be responsive to things not chemicals, they may be responsive to things like light. We refer to this process as phototaxis, and certain organisms may move towards or away from a light source, depending on whether or not they might use it. Uh, the movement of microorganisms uh, is actually rather random. Uh, so one process that goes on is the, this process of tumbling that we can see over here on the left, in which case the flagella on the surface of the microorganism spin in essentially random directions from one another. This uh, has a result that the microorganisms begins to uh, point randomly at different directions in the environment. Uh, this tumble movement is uh, alternated with running movement where all the flagella spin in unison propelling the organism into a single direction. As the organism moves towards a chemoattractant, uh, the number of runs becomes more frequent than the number of tumbles, resulting in the movement of the microorganism gradually towards the attractive chemical. Alright, so flagella enables the microorganism to move. And we can see several flagella on the surface of these round or these rod-like microorganisms. You can also see that there are other hair-like extensions on the surface of these, and these are known as fimbriae, or fimbriae for the plural, and this microorganism is also covered with them. Again, an optional structure found on some, but not on others. Typically, the fimbriae are going to be shorter than the flagella, and they're not going to help this microorganism to move. What they actually do is they help this microorganism to attach the surfaces in a manner that's very reminiscent of what we had when we were talking about the uh, capsules or slime layers, the glycocalyx. Uh, a microorganism that has both fimbriae and a glycocalyx is going to be very good at attaching. A microorganism that lacks both of them is going to be extremely poor at attaching to surfaces. A third hair-like structure is demonstrated in this picture right here. And it's a very specialized form of a fimbriae called a pilus. And we can see that it's, this uh, pilus is actually helping this microorganism to attach to a second microorganism. So it's doing the same attachment role that we saw the fimbriae themselves doing, but it's going to be attachment of one bacterium to a second one. And once attachment occurs in this manner, it allows DNA from one microorganism to be transferred over to another one. Allows DNA transfer through a process known as conjugation that we'll talk about in a little bit more detail with the chapter on genetics. Uh, the main clinical relevance is this is that DNA does not typically wholesale get transferred from one bacterium to a second one. Where this becomes very important from a clinical standpoint is when we talk about the DNA being transferred being responsible for antibiotic resistance. 
and the presence of pili are going to enable a population of bacteria to become resistant to an antibiotic much more quickly than a population that lacks these pili.